What's up, friends? Are you scared of turbulence while flying? You're not alone. Don't worry, though, because we're talking about a team today from Caltech and NVIDIA that are working on an algorithm called Falcon that's going to fix it and make it a smooth flight for you, even when there's bumpy air. Uh, so fasten your seat belts, stow your tray tables, and move your seat to the upright position because we're going to fly into this one. Ooh. What's up, folks? How's it going? Today we're talking, just like we said, all about turbulence and flying and airplanes and technology that's going to fix it. And this hits home for me. I actually just got off a plane like two hours ago. Um, and I'm, you know, we hit a little bit of rough air, but there's always that person on the plane. Fortunately, it's not me, but there's always that person on the plane sitting near you who you can tell is like deathly afraid of turbulence. And they think, you know, this bumpy air, the plane's about to fall out of the sky. Um, and, you know, in some ways, turbulence as like something scary has been massively overblown, but it's also still a pretty big safety risk for aircraft. So it's not likely that the aircraft is going to fall out of the sky and crash because of turbulence, but it's actually quite frequent that folks get an injury in some sort, or at least an inconvenience. They spill their drink on them because of turbulence in an airplane. Um, I, I think it was a Singapore airlines flight recently where like a hundred yeah. of the passengers were hurt because of turbulence. That was pretty, pretty insane. Yeah. Um, turbulence happens really quickly um pretty pretty unpredictable there's a lots of things that can cause it um and with climate change actually these um micro changes in air flows are meeting Th these events are happening quite more frequently than in the past so turbulence is getting worse it's an annoyance um and it's also a safety risk for passengers on a plane so engineers want passenger planes to be able to handle this but also think about in terms of like drones flying around that you know if you've ever tried to fly a quadcopter drone in the wind um it's actually pretty scary to be like oh i spent 500 bucks on that thing and it's bobbing around in the air because of the wind um that we're working about it talking about a team of engineers that want to be able to help these aircraft sense and adjust to turbulence um similar to how birds do in the sky to fly smoothly and improve safety yeah yeah i just Real quick, when you're talking about the person next to you that's deathly afraid of turbulence, uh, that was me for the longest time. <laughs> As someone, you know, being from Iran, and I, I would go back every summer, 15-hour flights, miserable, dude. Would literally not sleep a blink of an eye. I, I was, like, holding on to the seat for dear life because every shake, like, now I know it's not that bad, but, like, you're, what, thousands of feet up in the sky, things are shaking, you have no control. It's scary. And well, it's, but I totally get why people feel like that. Right? I'm telling you, uh, Nelly and I, we were recently in Alaska and we took a flight on a bush plane, like, <laughs> oh, a, like a little pond hopper plane, yeah. um, from where was it? Just outside of Homer, Alaska into Katmai national park. And it's like seven passengers in the plane, um, two or three rows of seating, like really, really small <laughs> prop plane. And I'll tell you when we're only like 300 feet above the ground and you you catch bumps in the air you're like oh man this is <laughs> this is really scary and there's actually this guy in front of us in front of nelly and i who had his like had his finger hooked into a d-ring on the side of the wall i'm like dude if we hit a bump in the air you, all you're gonna do is de-glove your finger <laughs> oh man yeah but all that being said right there's lots of different aircrafts that can benefit um if there were some way for them to be able to sense and adjust to turbulence um there's actually from a technical perspective, it's quite challenging. Um, old, they've tried this before with different AI methods and different sensing, and essentially they have only ever been able to react to turbulence by feeling it, right? So by seeing it, detecting it with sensors, um, and because turbulence happens in so many different scenarios uh, with different causes and different changes in airflow, um, essentially these old AI models would need to react to what they see, they're reacting too slow, and they needed a ton of training because there were so many different situations about, you know, this type of turbulence or that type of turbulence. Essentially, the reason you experience turbulence and bumpy air is because of unpredictable changes in the air current around the plane. Right. And by nature of them being unpredictable, they're really, really hard to empirically train an AI model to say, oh, these are all the different ways that turbulence can happen because there are millions of different poss possibilities, which is why they've had challenge so far with AI methods to try and create control algorithms for planes to, to fight against bumps in the air. 
Yeah. I mean, you know, you have laminar flow, which is nice, steady, smooth, exactly what you want to see. Going back to fluid mechanics. Then you have the turbulent flow, like you have weird pockets of air out there, basically speed bumps for the airways. That's what you're running into. And the problem, at least in my mind, breaks down into two portions, right? You have the ability to de detect that turbulent flow is coming your way and the patterns in which it's coming. Then you have the response to it. You were talking about um, earlier on, like nature and how that re we have birds that can react to turbulent flow, right? Like, how do they do that? They have wings and those wings can be extended or brought in to counteract some of that uh, turbulent behavior. And that's, that's kind of what this team is going for, right? Like if, if we can start delving into their sauce, you already mentioned, you know, empirically determining it's difficult. Um, there's two bits to the sauce. You have the detection and then you have the, the actual control to counter it. And, and one thing I want to mention just back to like, it being more than just um, airplanes, passenger aircraft that, mm -hmm. that can benefit from this. As they mentioned, like if you're flying UAVs around tall buildings that, you know, wind changing in cities and like narrow airways between two tall buildings, like just trying to contextualize how complex the turbulence problem can be when you brought in the scope to include UAVs as well, not just passenger aircraft. Like when you physically have hard obstacles that have that are redirecting wind around it that are included in this fluid dynamics question right it, it becomes a lot 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 more challenging which is why they can't determine it empirically right they have to use this new method right which which uses fourier methods to try and break down wind patterns into waves which is waves are things that uh ai model you know it's math it's on a chart it's way easier for uh, math model and AI model to understand waves. And that's how it's doing the detection because otherwise, if you're just trying to use wind speed and wind direction mm -hmm. as your vectors to, to, to under, understand and train this thing, especially when you're talking about UAVs and cities, right? You're going to have way too many different factors that, you know, you're never going to be able to understand it. Definitely. Also, I don't think there's anything more triggering for an, uh, an engineering student than Fourier, uh, the Fourier okay. transform. You said you said Fourier transform that that's something that did hurt me a little bit. But honestly, when you said fluid dynamics, that hurt me a little more. I, you know, just the whole subject in general. It's the worst grade I got in all of school ever. Um, so so see, uh, that that's a testament to what I just said. You know, I'm it, uniquely it unqualified to speak about this. <laughs> but um, the the feedback from the team in terms of how they used it that was really impressive to me. Basically, treating turbulence as kind of like a sinusoidal wave. And then that that's so much easier to analyze. Like even if you're just visually looking at it, you're like, all right, this goes up for this period of time, then down for this period of time. And then if you now have a mechanism that can counteract that movement, boom, you have stability or relative stability. So that is in itself pretty genius. Um, there was another bit that I, I wanted to highlight. You were talking about, you know, inside cities and quadcopters and stuff like that why turbulence is important um if if you have a massive vertical obstacle against wind that's coming in at very very high speeds that is like the perfect recipe for turbulence right because you got it hitting the wall bouncing everywhere and i don't i at first it didn't make sense to me why they were so fixated on quadcopters but now thinking about like amazon drone deliveries and stuff like that that makes a lot more sense and uh you know everyone says the future of transportation is uh, VTOLs, vertical takeoff and landing yeah, pa good point. You know, passenger craft, like, uh, hello, you, you know, you're starting to take a massive portion of the traffic that's on the road and put them in the sky and cities are uniquely where there's a ton of population density and where people would want to use these things yeah. anyway. Like, uh, I imagine t tons and tons of challenges, challenges that exist with helicopters. And that's why helicopters have a really high crash rate. Um, so, um, definitely, um, easy to contextualize what the uh, so what is here on this one for sure for sure and like if you think the speed bumps in your neighborhood are bad just wait until you hit a a turbulent flow when you're on your uh, flying car on the way home and potentially it can be life-threatening yeah that'll really uh, put a bump in your step well and so to go back to their secret sauce here yeah I, I we mentioned Fourier methods and it, it's interesting like they were essentially able to break down different patterns in the wind into waves. Um, they, they modeled how changes in wind happen. Basically, the changes in the energy in the wind 
mm -hmm. um, by modeling the frequency of the wind. Um, and they, they noticed that turbulence is typically related with low frequency changes um, in the energy. One of the things that was really interesting to me is this approach was not focused on like previous methods are trying to empirically understand like, oh, these are the different types of turbulence and this is how you react when you see this certain type of pattern. In this case, um, their method, which they call Falcon, I forget what it stands for. Uh, I got you. Fourier Adaptive Learning and Control. Pretty, pretty awesome. If you remember that their inspiration is trying to help UAVs and passenger aircraft and commercial aircraft adjust to win just the way the birds do. So choosing a bird name as the name for your, your secret sauce. I give it a nine. I yeah. give it a nine. That's solid. Yeah. 9.2 from my end. Incredible. <laughs> um, but Falcon is basically trying, instead of to categorize all the different types of turbulence and then basically create a playbook for, for aircraft and how to react to, to different categories of turbulence. Instead, they said, let's just understand the fundamentals of the energy shifting, what's going on in turbulence. So instead of, in, you know, in my mind, instead of creating like a dictionary of all the different words, right, you're trying to fundamentally teach the AI model how the language works or what the mm -hmm. language is. And, and, and that's what they've done here and with some success, right? So let's talk, I guess, did you have something else in the secret sauce, right? No, you, you mentioned no, sensing, no, 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 sensing no. and control, right? I was just going to say the control bit, but I think uh, in the so what you're going to, you're going to mention th that, that control bit. Yeah, well, exactly. I, I wanted to go to testing, right? So yeah, yeah. you have this, so what you're able to plot turbulence as waves. Um, how does that impact your ability to react to actual turbulence in a testing scenario in a physical testing scenario? Um, so what they did is they tested this algorithm Falcon um, mm -hmm. in a wind tunnel. And I, I think we forgot to mention that it's Caltech and NVIDIA researchers working together on this, right? Um, yes, given that's no, how excited we got. <laughs> no kudos to the to the authors so far. So I will distinct, I'll distinctly give a kudos to the, to the team from Caltech. Um, they used an air tunnel or wind tunnel um, and they used an airfoil. So basically just a physical model of a wing, mm -hmm. a cross section of a wing, equipped with a ton of different sensors as well as control surfaces. So they've got a bunch of sensors on it that are able to inform the model on how the energy is shifting um, how the wind is shifting around it. Um, and then they've also got a bunch of control surfaces, basically controllable with motors to physically change the shape of the wing to try and react to the turbulence. Like um, as, as the average listener, like you've seen control surfaces when your plane is taking off and landing, right? Well, and I, I don't know if this is true, right? Because you and I are engineers and we always try and choose a seat with a view of the wing. <laughs> yeah, good point. Actually, good point, good point. But to, if you've to, ever seen the wing extend and then when you're landing, the, the flaps come up, right? Like control surfaces. Yeah, exactly. Right. So if you've, if you've never paid attention to the wing on a plane, I urge you next time you book a, book a plane seat and you have seat selection, I urge you to choose a seat near a window um, with a view of the wing because it's actually quite fascinating to mm -hmm. watch these control surfaces like you're saying right they've got different flaps they've got different rudders they've got different types of adjustment to try and physically change the shape of the wing and that's all they need to control the plane um which is just crazy to you know blows your mind that they can move such a big large heavy object just by changing the shape of the wing yeah um, but but that's what they do right and so they have these control surfaces motorized that they're able to change um, the shape of the wing in response to the turbulence. They created an unpredictable turbulent environment um, by essentially placing, uh, I think it was a cylinder with a movable attachment inside the wing tunnel. So it's like yep. flapping around, moving around, creating unpredictable wind that gets all twisted up. And when we say turbulent wind, it's really just like the airflow. Instead of moving in clean straight lines, laminar flow, like Fabo mentioned earlier, you've got all these like weird squiggles and mess. Like imagine if you took a ball of yarn on the table um, and you're used to the yarn being in like long, straight, parallel lines. Um, think like the strings on a guitar and that's laminar flow. Turbulent flow is like someone went and scrambled all those up and then this wind is hitting the wing. Um, but instead of it being nice and smooth and easy, it's, it's all scrambled around and that's what causes the plane to bump around. Um, so they're creating turbulent wind in the same way by having the cylinder that moves around with this attachment in the wind tunnel, unpredictable wind. And they essentially turn this Falcon uh algorithm on and they said like understand how this turbulence is working and then learn how to control and stabilize the uav um and i think even in these like super extreme conditions 
it was able to control and stabilize the UAV in under 10 minutes, I think yep. is what they said. That's um, correct. I have no context as to how long it takes other models to do this, but the fact that it's completely random, um, completely random turbulence, and then Falcon is able to actively stabilize the UAV after only nine minutes of training time is insane to me because the other way of like empirically trying to understand all the different types of turbulences, I can only imagine the thousands and thousands of hours of testing and flying that you would have to do to create all the different scenarios, right? A dictionary of all the different scenarios that could potentially happen to train, you know, the old AI method. Correct. And I think it's worth noting, at least if I remember correctly, this isn't like a binary approach either. It's not like for the full nine minutes, Falcon is bad at handling turbulence and then suddenly it becomes good and all is stable. It's progressively getting better as more and more data is coming in about yeah. the turbulent flow and it's better processing it. And, you know, as it's adjusting to the flow, it's getting more feedback, so on and so forth. So you, you have this curve that's hockey sticking in your favor for stability. Um, nine minutes, I, I don't know, like you were saying, it seems pretty impressive for me as is, but the researchers did mention that um, that is the parameter that they want to keep optimizing over time. Because when a turbulent event happens, like the one with Singapore Airlines, you don't get the oppor opportunity to gather nine, 10 minutes of data. You want to react as quickly as possible. Yeah, and right? I, I wonder if it's like you have nine minutes of training for this type of wing geometry and this type of wind speed. Um, instead of trying to categorically and empirically look at all the different types of potential turbulence in all the different settings, in this case, maybe you're just looking at the, a few key variables um, that you can pre-train a model and deploy it into the field on a bunch of different um, different platforms, let's say, and mm -hmm. reduce that training time. I, 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 I hope that this is the case, right? That if they were to take this same airfoil with the same geometry in a similar situation in a different wind tunnel, maybe the training time would only be one minute instead of nine. That's that's my hope as well. It kind of reminds me of an article we had, I think, two, three months ago at this point, where there was this uh, generalized robot that came pre-programmed with some basic instructions on how to do a task. And then on the, you know, in, in the in situ, it was able to fill the remaining 25, 30% of its training instead of learning from the ground up. Like you said, I'm hoping that whatever model they make is able to have some level of understanding based on the airfoil, um, you know, weather conditions, whatever, on how it should be trying to counter turbulence, but then it picks up the remaining on the way. But this, as again, as far as I understand the aerodynamics, there's so many factors that go into this that I wonder how much can they really meaningfully pre-train uh, before deployment. Yeah, and I mean, I'm assuming that there are a number of different steps they can take here to make it applicable to like commercial aircraft like you're mm -hmm. saying you don't you don't want after you don't have to wait nine minutes in a commercial aircraft dealing with severe turbulence before uh you can understand what's going on right at that point the pilot's probably just going to change the altitude to try and get out of the turbulent stream mm -hmm. to, to save the passengers from getting scrambled around in the back um but i i think even in the commercial aircraft in the uav space like if you have to fly a drone between two buildings to do some type of thermal assessment, right? You're not able to easily change the altitude or just go to a different spot. Like you have to fly the drone in that spot. Even nine minutes of training time would be, I would say, not an insurmountable task. It would be surmountable, right? Mm -hmm. If you're able to control the drone for nine minutes and not crash into two buildings for nine minutes, then it can truly adapt and understand the turbulent flow and be able to control and stabilize itself. Like they're, Maybe in the commercial aircraft space, there's more work that needs to be done. But I bet in terms of testing with quadcopter UAVs, they can probably deploy this today and start to see an immediate impact. You're definitely right. Yeah. And I'm excited to see it as soon as possible, honestly. Like I said, um, used to be afraid of turbulence, gotten better with it. Still makes me uncomfortable at times. Um, and I for sure don't want to be in the same position as those 100 people that got injured on the uh, Singapore Airlines flight. Well, and to me, this this the analogy, it kind of reminds me of something similar that I've seen in the automotive space. Um, have you seen these cars that, you know, now that we've got vehicles equipped with so many sensors and cameras, mm -hmm. they can kind of detect where there are bumps in the road and then automatically adjust like the ride stiffness and ride height to make a smoother ride. Have you seen any of these demonstrations at all? No, no, I haven't. It's, um, it's I... pretty interesting. 
Um, but it's it's to me it feels really similar to this where it like it starts as like a cool demo that someone does saying like oh you know in a few years we're going to roll this out and now this is a feature that I see a lot of OEMs working on and starting to roll out into their vehicles like starting last year I think where they've got vehicles that have like active ride stabilization trying to look at obstacles bumps in the road potholes as an example and then can like automatically adjust the ride stiffness for that tire that's going to hit the pothole to make sure that your car doesn't go to dunk when it hits it. Um, Don't tell is... me that, man. Don't tell me that. I got my rose colored glasses on for my 2013 Corolla. You're ruining well, this for me. Yeah, you're going to keep hitting potholes in that thing for <laughs> 300,000 more miles before it dies. But, you we know, can hope. In, in my mind, that's a that's more of like a, I'm not going to say one dimensional problem, a two dimensional or three dimensional problem, whereas this right. uh aerodynamics problem is a little bit more complex um but you know if that has already been figured out and started to roll out on passenger vehicles on the road i could see this being something very similar that follows in the sky no that's a that's a really good point um what do you say we start wrapping up yes sir um let me wrap us up here and just give everyone a reminder if you are scared of sudden turbulence in flight you're not alone uh, forebodes in that group of people scared of turbulence and recently over 100 passengers were hurt on a Singapore Air Airlines flight I think it was in May uh, just because of turbulence so turbulence can hit without warning it almost always does especially in rough rough weather and it's actually getting worse with climate change so engineers are working on planes that can actually understand the dynamics behind the turbulence adapt to it just like the way that birds do they call their algorithm falcon which is pretty cool it's like trying to learn from birds and they say that they can deploy this to future aircraft to adjust their movements, basically change the shape of the wings to make flights smoother and safer um, using advanced sensors and AI. So imagine flights that are like as calm and smooth as a car ride in a Rolls Royce, thanks to this innovation called Falcon. So flying is going to get safer. The future looks bright. Um, you know, I don't think you should be as scared of turbulence in the future if this plane has got the Falcon algorithm on it. Money. I, I want a plane with Falcon on it. Take the MCAS out of the Boeing 737s and put Falcon on it. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.